What I'm about to say might be a bit of a controversial statement, but I love video games. Games are a type of media which puts you, the player, directly in charge of the experience, allowing a special bond to be made between the consumer and the product that can be hard to replicate in other mediums. All my life I've played games made by the big boys at Nintendo, Sony, or Microsoft, but in this day and age, anyone with a computer can make a game of their very own. But that doesn't mean that video games aren't hard to make, they take a lot of time and a lot of effort. So how could any one person just make a game all by themselves? Enter the indie scene, a fantastic community of people who are not only passionate about the games they play, but are also passionate about making great games themselves. Cave Story, Stardew Valley, and heck, even Tetris was originally created by just one person. But even then, making an indie game can still take a handful of years to make. So what happens when a single person takes maybe, I don't know, let's say a week to create their game? Look no further than sites like GameJolt or Itch.io. And I'm not talking about every game on these sites, they actually have some pretty good games easily accessible on the front page. No, I'm talking about the games buried in the harder to reach areas of the site. I'm talking about the kind of games that don't really make sense and make you start to question, who made this? Why did they make this? And why am I playing it? These are all questions you ask yourself when you're playing a game in the egg-like genre. If you're a fan of vine sauce, you've probably heard the term egg-like before, primarily used by Vinny to describe a game that he's playing. The definition for what an egg-like game is isn't really defined at all, so I thought it would be fun to take a quick look at some of the most important and influential games to the egg-like genre, and see what we can learn and take away from them to better understand the term egg-like and what it means. Fantastic Game was developed by someone who underwent the name The Fantastic Kinnear, and was publicly released in June 2012, and to this day has almost 9,000 downloads on its IndieDB page. But a month before its release, The Fantastic Kinnear had emailed the game to Vinny, specifying how he would like Vinny to play his game on stream. This stream is when the term egg-like was first coined, used to describe the bizarre nature of the game and the seemingly random events that take place in it. He most likely used the prefix egg because of the very notable white eggs that played a loop of a small portion of Smash Mouth's All-Star when you approach. The gameplay can be likened back to games like Super Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie with its collectathon-like elements. Although, aside from walking around and picking up the game's collectibles, there wasn't much to do in the game. That was until three months later when the Fantastic Kinnear updated the game to version 1.fun, which is a really weird way to name a version of your game, but I guess it's not too out of character when you compare it to the rest of the game. So what did this new version add? Well, not much actually. It just added some new areas, and well, that's about it. Despite the promise of a Fantastic Game 2.0 seen at the end of the Fantastic Game 1.0 fun, the project was seemingly abandoned at some point. The next major egg-like game is Le Fantabulous Game, which was released sometime in spring 2013, and was created by someone going by Fantabuloso online. 
Just like the Fantastic game, Fantabuloso had emailed Vinny a copy of his game wanting him to play it on stream. Although, unlike the Fantastic game, it was actually not that bad. Sure, it wasn't the best game in the world, but no egg-like ever is, but it certainly raised the bar for what a good egg-like should aspire to be. This was a good thing because before Le Fantabulous game, a lot of people were attempting to recreate the feeling of the original Fantastic game, but mostly came off as just being copycats. Fantabuloso saw this and decided to show everyone just how easy it was to make a game that was enjoyable to play. Um, so essentially, egg likes were a thing. They're less of a thing now, but they were a huge thing, especially on Vine Sauce. Um, and I just got really tired of all the lazy attention grabs that were just plaguing the Vine Sauce community at the time. Stuff like, specifically, Weed Chase and Alien Jump. I think the Fantastic Game and Fantastic Game 1 Point Fun themselves were actually really cool, fun products. Um, but I did feel at the time that Fantastic Game was kind of due to the attention that they were getting affecting the Vine Sauce community in a negative way. So, I got pissed being a little edgy 16, 17 year old spiteful little boy. Um, I set out to parody it and make a higher quality product in less time. And I just kind of took the Fantastic Game and made a bootleg of it. So it was, instead of the Fantastic Game, it was the Lay Fantabulous Game. His game featured all of the two mechanics featured in the Fantastic Game, that being walking around and collecting but expanded upon it by adding combat, characters, dialogue, a story, and different worlds to explore, all connected via a hub world. Compared to the Fantastic Game, I'd say, yeah, it's pretty good. But speaking of the Fantastic Game, just like that one, almost two years later, the Fantabulous Game got an update of its very own. That's right, in January of 2015, we got Lay Fantabulous Game version 0.9, which makes a lot more sense than one point fun. This update contained a lot of new content while also polishing up the old stuff too. New worlds, weapons, and bosses. There truly was so much to do and so much to see. This is arguably the best egg-like game, and if you're gonna play any of these games, I'd probably recommend this one, as it seems to have the most love and care put into it, and won't make you wanna die after 30 minutes of playing it. Also, I'd like to break off topic for a second and fast forward to the present, in which Fantabuloso is still actually working on the Fantabulous game, and will receive its biggest update yet, version 1.0 sometime in the future. A Kickstarter and demo will be released sometime in 2019, and from the looks of the trailer, it looks pretty good, so go ahead and check it out if you're interested. Link will be in the description. Anyways, let's get back on track. There's not much to talk about when it comes to the brilliant game because everything relating to it has been deleted off the internet. Seriously, I can't find anything about this game, other than the fact that supposedly Vinny had played it very briefly on stream before calling it trash and moving on to a different game. But other than that, there's not really much to go on. It's actually a very interesting situation. You see, the Brilliant game was considered so bad that it has actually been cited as the beginning of the end for egg likes, and what started the inevitable downfall of the genre. And just to clarify, the Brilliant game isn't the sole reason for the egg like genre's downfall. There have been many bad egg likes in the past, this one just seems to be the one that made everyone really start to lose hope for the genre. Sure, people still made egg likes after this game's release, but none seemed to capture the magic quite like the Fantastic Game and Fantabulous Game did. Now, these are all just rumors because there's no actual evidence to this game actually existing, aside from a few screenshots. In fact, the brilliant game was so horrendously bad it had been rumored that the creator of the game tried to erase any and all information regarding the game off the internet, never to be seen again. But that won't stop me from playing it, because after a couple of Google searches and an email or two, and with special thanks to Ian from Super Viola Bros on YouTube, 
I got my hands on this game, and so, one question remains. How is it? Is it really as bad as people made it out to be online? Should it really be the reason the egg-like genre is seemingly non-existent to this day? Well, yeah, it's bad. Uh, really bad. If the Fantabulous game is an example of the best the egg-like genre has to offer, then this is definitely the worst it has to offer. Unlike every other egg-like, this game is very linear, leading you down a single path for the entirety of the game. And some areas are extremely bland and boring with not much to do except to walk forward. Not to mention, some of the challenges can be really tedious and ask a lot from the player. Also, if you happen to die at any point, you'll be sent to the Death Cube and forced to restart from the beginning. Which is the sole reason of why this is the only egg-like game I can't finish. There's a pretty cool fight with Master Hand at the end, but it's easy to fall off the stage, and if you fall off the stage, you have to play the entire game again, and it's really not worth it at that point. Honestly, after playing this game, and if the rumors are true, I don't blame the developer for not wanting to be associated with this game anymore. Although, there is something to be said, however, about how interesting it is to be playing a game that was never meant to be seen again. Let's talk about this for a minute. Th nearly three years ago, I was sent an email by a game na uh, by a guy named Fantastic. Fantastic Anir, to be precise. And that began this whole thing of sending me, ironically, shitty games. It was called The Fantastic Game. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. And then there was a second version of The Fantastic Game. And then there were a ton of clones that were dubbed The Egg Likes. The Egg Likes were a, a take on... It was a riff on the idea of, of the eggs in, in The Fantastic Game. Um, then The Fantabulous Game came out. And that was actually competent. That was... A game and it actually worked and there was combat and bosses it was really weird but it was the best of the shitty game genre but the thing is it is possible for some things to stop being funny as we've learned and the fantastic game and its many clones like alien jump and weed chase for example uh, stopped being funny pretty quickly and we we soon discovered um, that the law of diminishing returns was was setting in and a lot of these games that people were making you know shitty on purpose were not in fact funny at all and so therefore i stopped playing them people were sending me emails with um poorly worded you know sentences misspellings all caps and the games were inevitably getting worse and worse and even the ones that weren't terrible i still didn't want to play sure i played a few shitty games here and there but usually not too many of the ones that people made for me specifically based on the fantastic game. The egg-like genre had died. Almost three years later, and here we are with the newest addition to the egg-like genre, the excellent game. While not yet publicly released and the developers currently unknown, this game was streamed by Vinny on April 14th, 2019. The game harkens back to its original egg-like roots. You simply walk around and collect as many eggs as you please. It's very reminiscent of the fantastic game where instead of multiple worlds to explore, like in the fantabulous game, you have one massive world to explore. There are some neat things like a boat with actual controls and checkpoints that allow you to teleport back to places you've already been. Although multiple locations in the game have an under construction cube in front of it and some of the mechanics don't work as intended, so it's obvious the game is not complete and maybe once it is, it'll be released to the public. But for now, that's all we have to go on. So, after four major games and two updates, can we finally answer the question as to what is an egg-like? Well, 
Defining what is and isn't egg-like is hard because every interpretation is different from the last, and each game has something that makes it unique and stand out from the others. But let's say if I was forced to define what an egg-like game is, then I would say at its core, an egg-like game is a game that shares its essential gameplay mechanics with the games that pioneered the genre, such as the Fantastic Game and the Fantabulous Game. Typically, egg-likes are a first-person exploration game in which the player must traverse an open world and overcome certain challenges in order to collect a specified collectible. These collectibles can then be used to expand the world that they inhabit. Egg-likes are known typically for being comical and bizarre in nature and include various pop culture references, whether that be in the form of characters, music, or sounds. The appeal of egg-likes can be likened to the amateurish nature in which they're created, often being made in the free version of Unity with development time being very short. Now, this doesn't really encapsulate everything that makes an egg-like an egg-like, but I feel it gives a basic gameplay structure for those who have never played one of these games before. Now, I know the whole point of this video was to kind of give a definition to the term egg-like, but really, an egg-like can't be put to a science, because if you try too hard to capture the feeling of classic egg-likes, it can come off as well, trying too hard. So what about the future of egg-likes, and do they even have one? Well, I'm not sure. Egg-likes are honestly pretty fun for the sheer amount of randomness when it comes to playing them. You never really know what you're going to get when you play one. People seem to enjoy Vinny's stream of the excellent game, some people even claiming for it to be a nostalgic experience for them. So even after the bad rap the egg-like genre got after the brilliant game, people still seem to have fond memories of these games, which is promising for the future of the genre. I think as long as good egg-likes keep coming out and the word keeps getting spread around, then I think the future of egg-likes could be pretty bright. In fact, that's essentially the entire reason I'm making this video, to help spread information of the genre around and hopefully inspire some more great egg-like games. Because at the end of the day, you don't have to be extremely skilled in game design to make an egg-like. All the games I talked about today were all made by individuals with a variety of skills. I think that only adds to the appeal of egg-likes. I can make one, you can make one, anyone can make one. What really matters when it comes to making an egg-like is the passion that you put behind it. If you really care about making an enjoyable experience, then everything will turn out alright. And well, that's about it. Thanks for taking time out of your presumably busy days to watch this video, I really appreciate it. This video took a while to research, more so than other scripts I've written in the past due to how niche and old of a topic this is. A lot of the information I needed was either hard to find or doesn't exist anymore. And some sources contradict other sources, so essentially what I'm trying to say is I'm not perfect. And if I got any of my information wrong, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make a pinned comment featuring any corrections that need to be made. I also wanted to give a huge thanks to Ian, once again from Super Viola Bros on YouTube, for providing me with the Brilliant game. Funny thing actually, I believe he is the only known person to still have the Brilliant game before I made this video. So props to him, I quite literally couldn't have done that segment without him. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.